Bob with Odin's Lock. But today we talk about something that we don't normally hear about, and it's called a wafer lock reading. I know a lot of the automotive guys do a lot of this stuff, so it's like I'm it's not a new thing, and I'm not gonna show you anything you probably can't find already somewhere on the internet. Let me fix this phone out. So what I wanted to do was just kind of go over some of the little tips and tricks and I'm not going to go through the whole spill because it, it actually gets kind of boring and, and the only time I really uh you know I use this is when I'm in a situation where say the lock itself can't be uh impression because maybe the the housing that's in is plastic like a, sometimes you'll see in an office they have a thermostat cover and it'd be a plastic uh, I, know, I know Jason from SC Lock and he uh he just did one here a while back and he read it he read the lock, he read it from uh, the wafer captured position, which means that uh, he picked it, and then he could look in there and read the wafers themselves. So they was all right to flush uh, shear line, and you can see. But uh, there's also the other method, which is uh, where you try to, uh, let me find my other flash, where you leave it in the uncaptured state like this, how mine is right now. Here's my flashlight. And, uh, you can go on ahead and uh, look in there and you can see the, the actual wafers themselves where they, they still float and you use a, what's called a reading tool. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get a very good light like this, but you use a reading tool in there and you'll push each wafer down. Let's see if I can get closer to this. Let me see if I can blow that up a little bit. And so you just look in there and you go on ahead and... Uh, Usually you start from the front and go work your way back and you'll read your uh, wafers in there. Actually, I'm kind of stuck. But uh, yeah, anyways, you read on in there. Yeah, I should have bolted this in the back, but you understand what I'm, I'm doing here. You're just moving down each wafer and uh, able to see the what's going on in there. And for this here, you know, I'm not going to put the whole spill on it. You can see the wafers in there. And what this turned out to be, and I went through a few series on this, you know, the bottom line is with the wafer lock is, for me, I have uh, several kits. Let me fix my phone here. Pardon the movement. I have several kits, and this one here was actually a Compax one here. This is locked I'm using. And those wafers, uh, they got a slightly radius to them, as you can see right there. And even on there, if you pull it out, you actually see the numbers on some of them. That'll focus. So it tells you what it is. And so I was able to decode that pretty easy anyways. But uh, if you can't get the lock apart, like in this one right here, where they, uh, they're they uh, riveted at the end or uh, cramped or mashed, uh, however you want to say it. But uh, you wind up with that kind of a situation, then you want to read it. In automotive, especially, if you don't want to take a, the lock apart and go through all that, you know, it, it's it's a worthy skill to have is reading. And what you're really reading is, uh, you know, here's your spring arm. And you're reading this part here. And this is actually where the bidding is because it's going to push away. It's going to push against the, the spring. It's, it's always pushed down when you look in the lock, but it's uh, not at the shear line. So when you put the key in, it'll pull it up, and you just pull them all up to the different series until you got the. Let me see if I can pull it until you have the uh, the bidding, and so you can read that. And so like, uh, they don't really have it as a you know. A one two three four. I I'm numbering myself just so it's like you get lost in the zeros and the twos, and I I do that because when you get into the masters, you know it's like a three five. 3-1, that's a number three cut, and then a number one cut. So you run into situations like that. So, you know, these these wafer lock reading tools, they're excellent. I mean, they're they're good to have, you know, better to have a radius on there. And this one here has graduations on it. But, uh, you know, you can get into the, where you have these uh, wafer lock readers, key readers, and I'll tell you what your key is. And this, not that 
bidding there. Uh, sometimes I've come across where uh, when you're trying to shine a light in there, the glare is too much. You know, you can trying to look in there, you can sometimes color with the sharpie, and that rubs right off. You know, so you can just do that, and so you can see that the glare is not as bad on the, on the sharpie part. Then when you're done, just rub it off, even a little zip 45 or ID red or something will help with that. Also, there's a you know, everyone has scopes uh, that they like to use on these. I bought this cheapie here. This is a, a Dr. Mom scope, and it works really good. I mean, uh, for what I'm doing, I don't do safe work, so it's like I never really invested a whole lot into these. So I you know, didn't find it necessary to, you know, spend, you know, hundreds of dollars on them. But I, mean, I think these batteries are kind of old. This is usually a lot brighter. I'm just showing this as an example. But, Actually, I think I bought this on uh, Amazon, maybe less than ten bucks. Might have been six or seven bucks, but oh, then I lost my piece here. Anyways, I'll get this one here. Went right down the rabbit hole over there, and so you can look in there. You can go ahead and see what's in there as far as the bidding. I don't know if it's going to focus, but you can see that. And so what I'm looking at is, uh, you know. You want to work from your way from the front to the back, and you will uh, try to read that. And it's not exactly that you're what you're seeing right there in the young capture state where the the wafers are are free to move. You're capturing what it, about for like this compact. I think the, the dimensions is twenty five thousandths. So a key with no cut is basically number one. But even then, it's going to push the wafer down. So, you know, a number one cut is still going to push that wafer down. That's the number one right there. And so it, it pushes it down. And so you're really reading, you know, the 25. You got to figure you got to have to move, push it down 25 thousandths. So what you want to do is uh, you can get your key and you can kind of hold it in there like that at an angle. And you kind of see where the bidding is. You can look back in there. So you kind of know that a uh, blunt key is going to be able to push that down. So the number one, you're not, now if you were to pick it, like uh, I think Jason did one here a while back, he picked the lock and uh, then it was in the, uh, it was in the captured state where, you know, the wafers are captured and you can look in there and that, that would be the exact bidding, but you can't get into the back wafers, you know, to see what the bidding is. So you run into that. And the other thing that I do occasionally, if you really have a hard time seeing, is I use this, uh, let me see if this is fine. This is a UV security ink. You know, it's a clear, permanent ink, visible under UV light. And what you can do is uh, you can rub it on there. And this marker is about empty, dried up, so hopefully it'll... I don't know if it's going to show. And you put that in there, like say. And you don't even have to spin it, but if you had a blank key, you know, you would put that in there. And uh, I should have blank somewhere. I should have done that, but... Let me see if I can do this other one real quick. It's, it's closer to being blank. Give me a second here. I, it, because it's invisible, I can't really even see if it's leaving anything on it. And so, so with that, then you can get you a UV light. Let's see if I already open it up. Let me turn my lights off here. Maybe I can see better. So then you can see some of the lights, some of the marks in there. And that sometimes will help. I mean, uh, it, it's hard for the phone to see it, but you can see the wafers in there. Let me see if I can blow this up a little bit. You start seeing some of the wafer marks in there. And what it's leaving, and that marker was pretty pretty dry, but that's what you got. That's what that, that UV ink leaves. It leaves a, that kind of a mark on it. So the darker you have it, actually. Let's see, that's better. So it's pretty cool, you know. That's one of those things that it works pretty, pretty decent for impressioning too. And so you can see the back, you can see a little bit of the glow back there. Let's see if I can get in there better. This is where, you know, I, I need a smaller flashlight. I used to have a pen light and the batteries, I don't use that much. So the batteries, uh, kind of went bad on me. Yeah, anyways, you can see some of the marks in there. So that's how you can see, you can see the two, uh, the, the one one, then the two in the back, and then uh, the very far one is a four, which you can always already see. And let me turn my light back on. 
And so what you have here is, uh, as you look in there, let me see if I can get this light in here. You got the, the major ward and the minor wards. The major ward on the bottom, and sometimes, you know, if you have the key turned like this, the major ward is what actually blocks the key, and you'll know because it's, uh, say when you put the key in, let me fix this magnification. When you put the key in, the milling's on the side here. So that's going to be, you call it right over left or left over right. The ward is on the actual left on this style here. And so uh, if it's up top, it'd be the same. But uh, it'd be on the right. But uh, anyways, uh, you just got to know the key you're putting in. So you got that, and then you got the smaller wards, which is... The ones up above and that's actually what your side millings of the key are running into these parts right here and so that's uh your major ward on the bottom the closer it is to the bottom or to you know the the position of the bidding if i'm saying because if you have it up in the up position the closer it is to the top the, the lower the number is so it'd be like a one or a two and uh, a four would be, you know, almost all the way down to the bottom or to the the major or the minor ward. Sorry, I'm trying to remember all these terms, but uh, it's uh, what you do when you look in there. You kind of kind of just envision where that's taking place inside there because you're pushing that through. And so as you look, you know, the, the space on there will be closer to the middle of the keyway, the deeper the cut is. And so you're only gonna move it 25 thousandths at a time. You can almost kind of get a pretty good shot in there. See if I can blow that up again. I don't like using this phone. I keep trying to, so, right there. Let me turn this a little bit better here. You can kind of see. And on this, uh, I can actually get in the back, but you can see that very top ward. And this uh, bedding is actually right next to the middle ward, and it's a, the, it's a minor ward, but you can see it kind of in the middle. That's uh, as high as the, as deep as the key will need to be cut, because that's where it goes into milling. You can see here. So that's kind of a, yeah, no, I'm probably doing a crappy job of trying to, show this but impressioning is kind of the same you can go in ahead, ahead and go in there and try to leave a mark on a key blank and then see where your bidding is going to be so if you got to line it up uh you know for your well, first space and then with compacts you know the first step is going to be at 0.156 from the shoulder so it'll be like right about here and so that's the other thing with the, using the uv you can put a blank in there and wiggle it around and and uh, you'll see little bidding marks on there. You can kind of see some in there. But uh, you can also find depth and space. You gotta have some depth and space for you. Let me see if I can get them in here for this. These are actually one through five, I think. Maybe more. Yeah. But uh, so you can get in there. I don't even know if this will fit. Yeah, that'll fit. It gets you in the ballpark. And the problem is with Comp X and a few of the others. There's so many different variations of them, you know. I don't know. Some of these are Ilco. I don't want to go through the whole spill. I've already done the, the wafer locks, you know, the brands and stuff on here before. So, yeah. CSP. But, uh, and you do have to make note of the profiles. That's, you know, flat on top, and these are radius. Sometimes you'll see, like, a little, uh, a little hook right there. Let's see if you can see that. That kind of helps capture it, so it makes it a little bit more pick resistant. Not that wafer locks are that pick resistant. And when you get an automotive, they have sidebars, and so you don't really, you know, you, when you're trying to impression, it's not the same as a, you know, a regular wafer tumbler because you're actually pushing up, a, I guess, a different part than your, your actual keyway. So uh, whatever impression mark you leave is a little bit different. That's on GM, you know, the old GMs. I'm not sure if the new ones are. I don't do any automotive. But, Sometimes uh, it's nice way to use these UV markers. Uh, you can see what they'll, they'll leave. They'll leave a nice little mark on there. My, my marker is actually getting pretty dry. 
It used to be I could really saturate the end of that key and it would leave a, a nice mark on there. Can't do it so much more. So, but as you can see, it does need to come out of light off. Yeah, bad lighting here. It leaves a pretty healthy flavor on there. Flavor. But, and that's just your, uh, your basic black light. You get one that's got a smaller, more like a pin light. I used to have a, a light that was actually just like this. It's the same size and everything came in the same pack. And, uh, you know, you just like aim it in there. You didn't have this big bulky thing here going all over the place. But uh, you can see the marks in there, nevertheless. Turn that light off again. And it will leave some marks in there. Makes it easier to see sometimes if you don't like the glare. You know, so anyways, I just kind of want to go over that. Wait for lock reading. Excellent, excellent skill to have. Uh, let me see if I got the book over here. So, uh, I've talked about this one before. This is uh, just another one of those beauties, you know, to have. It's uh, from the National Locksmith. It's a guide to advanced wait for lock reading. Well, see if you can. And one of the things in this one is it does cover, you know, a lot of the different information uh, that you'll want. And it tells you oh, everything I'm trying to tell you and I can't do is because this guy can. But this is actually a, an excellent uh, book to have. And they kind of go through everything he does. Tells you even the code cards and all that. Different positions you want to do, how to look at them. Just, you know, basically you're just using reference. You're using a... Uh, the wards as a reference. And so that's kind of how that works. And it, when, it, when you're able to do it, it's, it's like impressioning. It's like, wow, I can't believe I did that. And yeah, these are cheap locks, but a lot of times, you know, I, I have a customer, it's like this one here where it's pressed in on the, on the back. You can't get all the way through it. You can't take it apart because it's in a cabinet or something. Uh, you don't want to drill it. And uh, maybe they're all key alike. And so you just know you got to get one. And so you go on ahead and you reach in there and you, you can be able to look in there and uh, figure out what the wafers are. I'm not actually even where you can see anything. But, so you look in there and that's, uh, like I said, you can also use a marker to get it pretty in the glare. But you want to get down to eye level so you can actually see inside. And you usually want to put your light on the top so you can actually see all the way in the back. But that'll allow you to see the wafers and after you do a few you start getting uh, the idea of uh, how much movement you're actually getting out of these wafers and uh it starts getting a lot easier and these wafers here they're not marked like some of them i have are some of these are marked but that's about all i just kind of want to go over this i thought maybe uh it's a skill you guys could could think about uh, working on uh could use uh most locksmiths uh could use this, you know, on a more regular application. Probably the, the automotive guys would use this as well as uh, the uh, the guys that work in the, in the manufacturing, uh, the maintenance guys that, that do locksmithing for like universities, you get a desk lock. So, you know, you can be a code smith where you just pull a code, and, you know, you look at that code number and you can look it up in the software or the books, whatever. I think I have even code books. I got some read codes. Uh, that's a lot of codes right there, but it's old. But, uh, I mean, there's uh, there's other ways to come about this, but it is a very useful skill to have, nonetheless, and it's something that a whole lot of people don't think about. So, thought I'd pass that on. Anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, you all have a wonderful uh, week. Bye-bye.